there are two different types of electrochemical cells. One of them is a voltaic cell in which we are going to be utilizing a spontaneous reaction to give us electricity and that's what we're going to focus on now. To begin with, uh, I just wanted to provide you with this graphic here to help you remember uh, what happens at either of the two electrodes that we have in a voltaic cell. So there's going to be an electrode that is called the anode. At that anode, the oxidation reaction is going to be taking place, so anox. And then there's going to be a cathode, which is the other electrode, and the reduction occurs at the cathode, so red cat. Anox, red cat. I didn't come up with it, somebody else did, but hopefully that helps you remember. All right, so this is a voltaic cell. Again, just to remind you, in a voltaic cell or galvanic cell, what we're doing is that we're utilizing a spontaneous reaction that is a redox reaction where electron transfer happens, and we're going to enable that to happen in two separate cells, and the electrons that are being transferred are going to be transferred from one cell to the other cell, and doing so is going to generate electricity. Uh, so here where I have the voltmeter, I could actually have a light bulb or a cell phone or whatever it is that I want to power through this chemical reaction. All right, we're gonna start looking at each of the components of this galvanic cell. So we're gonna have two half cells as shown here. One half cell is gonna be where the oxidation takes place and one is going to be where the reduction takes place. Remember that the oxidation occurs at the anode, the reduction occurs at the cathode. An ox red cat. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's left or right, that does not matter at all. It's just uh, wherever the oxidation is taking place, you're going to call that the anode side. Wherever the reduction takes place, you're going to call that the cathode side. Now let's start looking at the next components of this uh, galvanic cell. So I have the overall redox reaction here on the very top. Um, this is the complete redox reaction, but remember that that redox reaction can be separated into an oxidation and a reduction half equation. On the bottom here, I have one or two equations where I take the sink and convert it to sink two plus. And of course, to balance it out, I have to add two electrons on the product side, meaning that this is a oxidation because we are losing electrons, right? So we go ahead and label this oxidation. On the other side, I take the copper and I convert it into copper solid. So copper ions, two plus, goes to copper solid, and I write that here. And to balance that equation out, I have to add two electrons to the left-hand side. Because the electrons are on the reactant side, that means that this is a reduction. We are gaining electrons, right? So those are our two half cells. These reactions are what's happening here in the solution. So in the solution, I have zinc, solid, zinc solid is actually going to be my electrode, and that electrode is going to be converted from the solid phase into an ionic phase in solution, which is the zinc 2 plus, which is basically here in the fluid. And electrons are going to be liberated in that process uh, as, as a product. On the right hand side, what's happening is that I have copper 2 plus, which is in the solution, and that copper is actually going to be deposited onto the electrode uh, as a copper solid. So you can see that here, copper goes to copper solid, copper ions go to copper solid. And that is uh, through the use of two electrons that come in as a reactant. Okay, those are two half cells. And uh, all right, let's move on to the next part. Uh, oh, wait, and I forgot. Uh, again, I know I already said it. So at the, the side where the oxidation takes place, uh, there you have an electrode that uh, is called the anode, and on the right-hand side you have an electrode which is uh, where the reduction takes place, and that electrode is called the cathode, so red cat. All right, the next part is electron flow. So notice that here on the left-hand side where the oxidation took place, we were releasing electrons, while on the, on the other side we are gaining electrons. So wherever their electrons are being produced, those electrons are actually gonna come out and they're gonna travel through the other side where they are needed as reactants. So I can figure out the electron flow because the electrons will always be released on where they, wherever the oxidation takes place, and the, which is the anode side, and then they go to the other side where they are needed as reactants, which is my cathode side. So, 
The electron flow occurs through the metal wire that connects the two electrodes. These two bars are my electrodes and we'll, we'll talk about those in the next slide, I think. Uh, but it happens to this wire. That wire can be copper wire or could be any kind of metal wire, basically. The direction of the electrons is from wherever the oxidation takes place, which is your anode, to wherever the reduction takes place, which is your cathode. All right, next part, the electrodes. All right, so these electrodes are typically solid metals. And I put a little star because there are some reactions where the electrode is going to be an, um, like a container that contains a gas and it still has an electron, but, but it's not a solid metal. But for most cases, like 99% of the times, you're going to have a solid metal being the electrode. Now that solid metal can be involved in the chemical reaction or it can be an inert conductor. It could be something other than whatever you are reacting. So it could be something like platinum or carbon. In the particular example that we're dealing with right now, that electrode is actually part of the chemical reaction. Whenever you have a solid as part of the reaction, you can use that as your electrode. So in this particular case, my zinc solid is actually my electrode on this side and the copper solid is going to be the electrode of the other side. And remember that we said in the previous slide that, or two slides ago, I don't remember, that on the left-hand side where my solid zinc is being converted into zinc 2+, plus, right? That's actually the zinc from the electrode, the solid zinc from the electrode, that is actually dissolving into forming zinc ions. So over time, the anode is going to be losing mass because the zinc solid is being converted into zinc ions that are now swimming in the solution. On the right hand side, my copper, my solid copper is not losing mass. Instead, it's going to be gaining mass. And the reason for that is that copper ions from the solution are going to be depositing as copper solid onto the electrode. So the mass of the electrode actually increases over time as this process takes place. Just to remind you again, the anode is negatively charged and is where the oxidation takes place. It is also the source of the electrons. That's where the electrons come out from. On the other hand, the cathode is positively charged and is where the reduction takes place and electrons move toward. <coughs> and the, the charges are easy to remember if you think about the electron flow. The electrons are repelled by negative charges and they go toward the positive side because they are attracted to the opposite, si opposite sign. <coughs> Sorry. The next part of our voltaic cell is going to be the salt bridge, which is this thing right here. So of course, you would not have a complete circuit if these two cells were not connected again. Right? So part of the function of the salt bridge is to connect the whole circuit. But the way that it does that is that this salt bridge is made out of is typically made out of a porous glass that is embedded with electrolytes. Those electrolytes, you can think about them as soluble ions or mobile ions. And those ions have the ability to maintain neutrality in the solutions here, and that's their main job. They maintain neutrality or charge balance in the solutions of both cells. So let's look at that. What we said is that on the left-hand side here, over time we were releasing more and more positive zinc ions. The electrons leave, so overall you're going to end up with a positive charge accumulation. So what's going to happen is that negative ions from the cell bridge are going to come toward that side to balance that positive charge. On the right hand side, on the other hand, we said that copper 2 plus was being uh, converted into solid copper. So over time, we were losing positive charges. So, you know, and that's not good. And the electrons, uh, the electrons were being used up in that process. So over time, we were losing copper 2 plus charges. What that's going to happen is that the positive ions from the cell bridge are going to come to balance that out or to overcome that loss of positive charges. 
Now, what type of ions do we have here? We're going to have soluble ions, things like uh, group one metals like potassium or sodium. Uh, and then the anion is typically going to be nitrates or chlorides. And if you want to remember it just like this, the anions migrate toward the anode, the cations migrate toward the cathode. But the way that I usually think about it is I look at the equation and see what's happening. In this particular case, we were uh, forming more and more positive charges. So negative charges need to come and balance that out. And on the right hand side, we were losing positive charges, uh, positive ions. So the positive ions from the salt bridge need to come toward that side. All right, all of that information is written here. This is the way that I usually explain it in class uh, in one slide, just in case that you want to have all the information there in one spot. All right, so now there's another way for us to provide uh, a lot of information about what's happening in a galvanic cell, and this is known as standard cell notation or line notation. Basically shows the composition of the two half cells and the direction of the electron flow. So on the left hand side, we have our anode components. On the right hand side, we have our cathode components. Remember that the anode is where the oxidation is taking place. So this is where the electrons are going to be leaving and those electrons are gonna to go to the cathode. The cathode is gonna be on the right hand side and, um, and that's it. All right. In this line notation, we're going to have a certain number of lines that are being drawn. So whenever you have two lines, that means this is the salt bridge that is separating the two cells. So that means that to the left of the two, two lines, I have my anode. To the right of the two lines, I have my cathode. Now, the other line that we show here is whenever you have a phase change. Phase change means that you're going to have a solid and then uh, ions in solution. Here I have a solid and ions in solution. So the information I'm providing here is that I have a um, electrode which is made out of solid magnesium and in the oxidation process that solid magnesium is being converted into magnesium ions and in that process they are releasing electrons. Those electrons go to the right hand side they're going to combine with aluminum ions that are in the solution and when they react together they're going to come and form solid aluminum which is going to be my electrode. So over time this magnesium electrode is going to lose time. Over time this aluminum electrode is going to gain mass. This is another example, a little bit longer one. In this particular case, again, notice that we have the double line here indicating this is my anode, this is my cathode. In addition to that, notice that we have uh, this side is actually my electrode and that electrode is by itself and is not part of the reaction that is taking place. Here I also have another platinum electrode which is solid and is not part of the reaction that is taking place. Instead, in the reaction, I actually don't have any solids. What I do have is two forms of chlorine uh, where the chlorine is changing oxidation number without changing phase. So what I have is the oxidation of this chlorine into this other form of chlorine. Uh, and on the right hand side, I have manganese that is changing oxidation number as well. Uh, but all of the reactants and products of both of the half cells are in solution. So none of the dissolved ions can serve as an electrode, right? I can, if I have uh, only ions being, being the part of the reaction, then I cannot use them as electrodes. And whenever that happens, I'm typically, typically going to be using a platinum electrode. Another possibility is to use a carbon electrode, but platinum is the fail-safe uh, choice. Uh, that's that one. All right, so now we're going to try to do the line notation ourselves. Write the line notation for the galvanic cells that are on slides 32 to 37. So this is the one that we saw the figure of. Now we need to write the line notation. Remember that this is the overall equation that was given to us. And these were the two half cell equations. So remember that we have to put the oxidation, which is the anode, on the left. Out of these two, which one is the oxidation? Let's see if you can figure that out. 
Well, my oxidation is right here where I have electrons being lost. So my anode is going to be on the left, which is my oxidation. So I'm going to go ahead and write the zinc as a solid. And remember that I need a line to indicate that there's a phase change to now my zinc ions being in solution. And I'm going to go ahead and put a Q just to remind me. All right. From there, I'm going to put a double line to indicate a change to the other half cell. And from there, I'm going to have my other equation. And in the other equation, I'm going to have my copper 2 plus as a Q. And then I have a phase change to my copper, oops, copper uh, solid, which is my electrode. So by writing it in this form, I have indicated that this is my electrode. Whatever is on the outermost uh, spot is my electrode, and it has to be a solid. And then here I have the other form of my uh, element, which is changing, uh, changing uh, oxidation number, which is being oxidized here, and then this one is being reduced. I know that this is my anode because it's on the left-hand side, and the anode is where electrons are being lost, and those electrons come to the other side to be able to reduce that copper ion into solid copper. I highly recommend that you look at example 19.6 and problem 19.6 of the book to see other examples of line notation.